I don't, I don't just scribble artwork on, on a people's body. I translate what they have in their minds through my hands onto their body. Yeah, so it's, 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 um, I, I cater for the, the clients. Yeah, I'm here for my clients. Um, hi, my name is Chris, also known as Horigo. I practice traditional Japanese tattooing. Well, I've been tattooing for about, yeah, about almost 20 years now. Mm. And I started in Japan. Um, I was heavily influenced by the Japanese culture when I was living there. My eyes were exposed to more traditional tattoos and that got me more into it. And then, yeah, I mean, um, the first few years were quite challenging as an apprentice. I was um, learning how to draw, learning the, the trade, um, learning the lifestyle of a tattoo artist. Yeah, and I fell in love with the Japanese culture and the ways over there. And yeah, that's when I decided I, I want to do this for a living. I've read way, way back in the day, the client had no say in what they're going to get on their body. It might be seasonal, so if, that art, if you go to visit that artist in spring, um, that artist might have a lot of reference with the cherry blossoms and, and the sakura. He or she will probably want to use those sakura. Yeah, so it's quite seasonal. So basically, um, there's lots of history and there's lots of symbolism in regards to traditional Japanese artwork. Um, so this client, Kenta, was born in the year of the boar. So we have decided to put a big boar on his back piece, which is the biggest canvas on his body. And to emphasize the boar, we've put a season. Usually Japanese artwork consists in four types of seasons. So the summer, you have your uh, peonies. And then for the spring, you have your cherry blossoms. Um, and then your autumn, you have your maple leaves. And then for winter, you have your chrysanthemums. And we've decided to make this piece, his whole body, uh, an autumn piece. Yep. And so besides the ball, this is the, pretty much the waistline. So we've decided to make his, this from down lower or water items. So if you look carefully, underneath the ball, we have water here. And this thing here is called a namazu, which is called a catfish. And if you turn around a little bit, Kento, so towards the front here, he has, um, it's a dragon turtle. And then if you come towards the other side, he has a, a koi here. And then underneath the koi, you can turn a bit more, there's a little frog down the bottom. So from his waist down, it's all water splashing around with water items. And then if you look towards the top from his waist up, it's sky theme from here upwards. So I've decided to put two yokai here in the middle of his stomach. So this is called a nure onna. And on the other side, we have, uh, it's called a, a kappa, which is another mystical creature as well. And up the top of his, on his chest and his arms, we've decided to put masks. And these masks come in sets. This one here is called uh, tengu. This one here is called Karasu Tengu. And they're a pair. So that's why we've decided to put the pair on this side of his body. And over on the other side, this is a Hanya and this is an Oni. And these guys are a set as well. So we've decided to put these guys over this side of his body. Usually the traditional artwork has to hide under clothing um, and there's like different types of traditional clothing where they based the tattoo so you can still hide under the clothing and you can still have fun with the tattoos. So, Kenta's piece in general, we've decided to do half, half sleeve and half pants which is called Hansode and Hanzubong and this gap in the middle. It's called munebari. Um, 
So there's different ways you can finish the mikiri, um, how the bodysuit sits on the client's body. For example, if this came across like this, and if all this was filled in, this would be called donburi. Um, and you won't have the munewari, but we've decided to put the munewari in the middle. And obviously the sleeves come to, to, to a gobu, the fifth way, which is a half sleeve in English. Um, they can come down to, to about here, which is called shichibu, which is like a three quarter sleeve in English. And they can also come down to about here, which is called kubu, which is a full sleeve. And in regards to the leg as well, it's the same. So we've decided to cut it here because it's um, half, half hanzabong, short pants kind of thing. And then this can also come down you can stop it here, or you can just come down to here. So there's different sizes in regards to body suits. Yeah. Handle the other one. Scratch it, and check. <laughs> yeah, it hurts, man. <laughs> Before we start the actual tattoo, I usually have two consultations. Yeah. The first one is to meet and greet, and to be able to like understand and get what that client wants. And, and then I start drawing the design for them. And then when this rough drawing is ready, I get them to come back and we have a sit down and we talk about the drawing all over again. Yeah. And then after that, once they're happy with the drawing, then they can finally get booked in. And then that's how it, it, it starts. Yeah. The clientele helps me grow. Without my clients, I'm not a tattoo artist. I don't think I'm a tattoo artist. I think I'm a tattooer. And the way I grow is through, with my clients. I cater for the clients. Yes, so it's, it's quite important for me to be conscious of this. It's not, I don't, I don't just scribble artwork on, on a people's body. I translate what they have in their minds through my hands onto their body. Yeah, so it's, 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 um, I, I cater for the, the clients. I'm here for my clients.